my very first spring makeup look of 2016 thank you thank you very much I'm so excited to be filming this look right now you guys because I have actually wanted to film this since oh my god September of last year holy guacamole because I saw Diane Von Furtzberg show at Fashion Week I did not see like in person I saw you know on the interweb um, I saw the models makeup for that show at Fashion Week and I was just like First of all, Gigi Hadid was in that show. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with Gigi Hadid. Mm -hmm, thank you. So I was not inspired necessarily by Gigi Hadid, um, but I just saw the overall, all the models and their looks, and I was just so in love with like that kind of blown out turquoisey greeny blue shade. And I just loved that it didn't have like a really intense dark crease or a really intense dark under eye. It was just kind of like all blown out so beautifully. So for today's look, I added false lashes as always. You guys know I'm a little extra. That's just how it goes around here. But you guys can so get away with wearing just absolutely no lashes, just a coat or two of mascara for sure. I just wanted to do the little extra drama because that's me. But this is the easiest look to achieve of all time. Honestly, when I was filming it, I was like, wait, I'm almost done. Like, it went by so quick. Obviously, this is very bold, but I just think it's so fun for spring and summer. It's so girly. It'll make a statement, and it's easy to achieve. So I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll see you very soon. Bye, guys. Hey guys, let's go ahead and get started on this turquoise mermaidy blue tutorial that I still have no idea what I'm calling. First thing I'm gonna do is start by priming my face and I'm using the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. This is my favorite primer at the moment because it just gives such a beautiful glow without being oily or glittery. Then I'm gonna go with foundation and I'm gonna start off with the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Stick Foundation, one stripe on each cheek and one across the chin. And then I'm gonna mix it with the EX1 Invisiware Foundation. These are two of my favorites. I personally love mixing foundations because I feel like you're not always going to find one foundation that does everything for you. So when you have a couple that you like, maybe one gives really amazing coverage and the other one has the finish that you want. So you mix those two together and now it's like you are your own chemist in your own lab, just whipping up your own foundation. So that's what I love about mixing foundations. I have been doing this for years and it's my favorite way to apply foundation is mixing them. Sometimes I will mix Giorgio Armani with L'Oreal True Match and I love it. Anyways, I'm going to be color correcting my nostril area because I always get red here, which is just a hormonal thing. A lot of women get redness there, in case you're curious. Urban Decay came out with new color correctors. I was not expecting them to be this pigmented, which is great, but it was a little difficult to blend in that area, just letting you know, because this was my first time using that green shade. I'm using the same Urban Decay Weightless Concealer all around the eye area, and then I'm gonna take a very damp beauty blender. I get it soaking wet under the sink, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze like 15 times, then I just kind of put it in a towel or a paper towel and just kind of wring it out a little bit, but I like to leave a lot of moisture in there because it just makes the makeup look so smooth, and it will pick up any excess product. So if you cake on too much and you're way too heavy handed, this will help blend it out using a damp beauty blender, which is why I love it so much. So as you can see, I'm blending out that green color corrector and I felt like it was making my upper lip look a little funky. So I'm just going to put a little bit more concealer there and just go over it with the beauty blender. And then I felt like my face was looking uneven. So then I had to give a little flower in the center of the forehead and blend that out. So you're gonna see me doing a lot of steps to even out my face because I just felt like I wasn't looking like I was one tone. So now I'm gonna do a little bit on my chin I'm also going to go directly out from my lip back towards my ear. If you have like jowls or like saggy skin here, or sometimes you just feel like you have like fat there almost, um, going ahead and putting a lighter concealer like that can kind of help to pull it back if you contour. If you don't contour, it might do the opposite. But if you contour, this can kind of help to pull it back and recede it a little bit if that makes sense. So I'm just running over my whole face, making sure there's no lines, no creases, no extra cake face product. And then I'm going to set my under eye area. I'm using the Anastasia um, Banana Powder. This is sold separately and also in her original contour kit. And I am just using the Morphe M4, wait, no, this is the M530 brush, which I prefer for contouring, but I use it for my under eye. Now I'm gonna go in with my favorite face powder of all time. This is Giorgio Armani Illuminous Silk Powder, and I am absolutely in love with it. 
Now for the eyes, I'm gonna start off with using Makeup Geek Shore Thing, which I think is such a cute name because it's Shore, like S-H-O-R-E, so cute. And I am using a blending brush to apply this in my entire crease area, and I'm keeping it rather low today. I don't want this to go up too high all the way to the brow because we'll start to look very runway very quickly and I want to make it a little bit more wearable. So I'm going to keep it nice and low in the crease and I am using a Morphe M441 brush to do so. Now I'm going to go in with this gorgeous pigment that I am in love with. Again, this is by Makeup Geek and it's called Chameleon. Such a beautiful, high, intense pigment. But I am going to set my under eyes. So this is going to look really intense and scary, but what it's going to do is by pressing on this translucent powder and just letting it sit there, it's going to catch any fallout as I'm working on my eyes. And then when I'm done, I'll wipe it away and all the fallout will disappear. This way I can kind of be a little bit sloppier and go quicker when I'm working on the eyes and not worry about making a mess of my foundation and my concealer and my powder that I just got done finishing. So now I'm just going to take a Sigma E55 and apply this all over the entire lid. I'm going to make sure to get it all the way up in the crease. As you will see, I kind of start off with patting rubbing motions and then I like to go back and forth in windshield wiper motions to make sure that I get it all the way up in that crease. I kind of step back and make sure that it's all even. And if you want to add some Fix Plus to make it more intense, you totally can if you want to make it metallic. I'm going in with a little bit of Aqua Eyeshadow by Anastasia. Not going to lie, this part is not necessary, but I own the eyeshadow and it was sitting in front of me. I thought it was pretty and I just wanted to have some fun and add it. As you can see, it's very pale. I just wanted to use it just to make that crease just give a little bit more pop. But again, not necessary, but I do think it looks really pretty. I'm just touching up a little bit and adding a little bit more of that pigment just to make sure that it's nice and bright and shiny because I don't want to lose that like high, intense, gorgeous, frosty blue right there on the lid. Now I'm going to just wipe away, and as you see, everything disappears, any fallout, the powder disappears. It's like it was never there in the first place. It just looks nice and clean so you don't have any messy cheeks that you need to clean up now because that can be frustrating. Now I'm just going to fill in my brows. I'm not going to do anything too intense. I keep filling in my brows less and less and less recently. When I go back to my older videos, I'm just like, oh my gosh, it looks like I have two like brown worms on my face. And I just like filling them in a little bit less now. And every day I feel like I do it less and less and less than the day before. So I am using the Anastasia Brow Definer. This is my ride or die brow product. I swear, like, oh, there's never been anything like this before. It is my one and only. So now I'm going to take a little bit more of that Anastasia Aqua Eyeshadow, which is an all matte pale shade. And I'm going to go all the way from the outer corner to the inner corner. But I'm not going to bring it all the way in and wrap it around the inner corner. Just as you see, I'm stopping right there when I get to the inner tear duct. Then I'm going to go in with Makeup Geek Dragonfly. Oh my goodness gracious. This has got to be like one of my favorite colors of all time. Like it just speaks to me. When I did my palette video several weeks back, I had a ton of requests to use this shade in a tutorial. So here it is. If you're intimidated by this overall look, you can just put this on your lower lash line as a pop of color and just do no shadow on top, which is some wing liner. And it would look really, really beautiful for spring and summer. So I'm just blending that out with no additional products on my brush. I'm just running over it to make sure that it's not harsh or super duper intense. And then I'm going to go in with Nylon by MAC. This is my favorite highlight shade, but honestly, it goes so perfect with the look that I wouldn't even think about doing a different color because of that intense frost and the yellow undertone. It really is flattering to these shades. But I felt as though it was just too bright directly in that inner corner, so I wanted to blend it out. So I grabbed a synthetic brush. This is the MAC 242 and a little bit of the Anastasia Banana Powder, and I'm just going to blend that out so we have more of an overall brightening effect. I just want my look to be very whimsical and just brightening all around. So I am popping a little bit of that nylon on the brow bone as well. And then I'm going to take a little bit of Fascinating Eye Coal by MAC, which is a very creamy eye coal that is stark white, and I'm going to line my inner eyes. I loved the way this looked with that bright inner corner and that white on the lash line. I just think it's very, very different. And like I said, just kind of gives me like a fairy whimsical vibe. I'm going to pop on some lashes. These are one of my absolute favorites. First, I'm going to give my lashes a quick coat of mascara. And I'm going to be using the Velour Lashes in the style Wispy and Edge. I believe they're called. Maybe it's wispy and edgy. I will put it in the bottom bar down below for you guys who are interested. But they're one of my favorite lashes because they are drama while still being on the natural-esque side. I just think they're so beautiful. I'm going to make sure to get it pretty tight on my lash line since I'm not wearing any liner today. That way it looks as natural as possible. You like how I'm using the word natural right now while I'm coating my entire eyes with turquoise. 
So now I'm going to bronze the face and I'm going, <laughs> the face, not my face, not your face, but bronze the face. I'm going to be using MAC Give Me Sun. I didn't want to really contour today. I just wanted to really warm up the skin. That was the look I was going for. Just keeping everything really nice and warm with these really light, fresh, colorful eyes. So I am using a huge fat brush. This is by Tom Ford. It is ridiculously expensive, you guys. But oh my God, once you use it once, you never want to use anything else because it's just so amazing. Damn you, Tom Ford. But I'm going to go around the entire edges of my face on the cheekbones, the forehead, and then down by the neck. And then, of course, I'm going to put some super glue in my brows just real quick before we finish off this look because Anastasia makes the best brow gel in the entire world. It is Gorilla Glue for the eyes, like I've said before. And then for blush, I'm going to use two MAC blushes. I'm using Peony Petal and Modern Mandarin. The Modern Mandarin is the orange. Peony Petal is the pink. I'm going to mix those two together, again, just because I have them right there at my disposal. And I am using one of those Morphe brushes with, like, the bling collection that came out. I've been loving that one recently for blush. I'm just going to take a little bit of the RCMA No Color Powder. This is the same translucent powder I use underneath my eyes. And I'm just going to kind of wash this out a little bit because I felt like it just looked a little sloppy and I wanted to clean up just a little bit. So I make a huge stripe and I just immediately wash it away. So it's not necessarily baking. It's just cleaning it a little bit so that it's not so intense and just messy down there. I'm going to take the Hourglass Highlighting Palette and I'm going to just put this all over the entire apple of my cheek area. Do you see all those breakouts right now? I've had this texture on the right side of my cheek only for about the past seven to 10 days. I don't know what's causing it, but it's, it's, it's there, honey. It's there. And I'm going to go in with this Mali Beauty Highlight. So pretty, so jumbo. It's humongous and so exciting. It's called the Effortless Airbrush Highlighter. And I'm going to take a little bit of that and pop it on the top of my cheeks. I really shouldn't be really intensely highlighting since I have so much texture on my right cheek right now. But I was just like, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm doing it for the sake of the video because I think it looks really pretty with the highlight. Now I'm using Bite Beauty Souffle Lipstick and I'm going to give it a coat of gloss. This is Buxom Mai Tai. This is an option for you. It's very, very baby pink with a pinch of coral. I am going to change my lip in a second though because I changed my mind. I'm going to give my lower lashes a coat of mascara. I'm using Kevin Aquan Mascara. It's a really great mascara if you want to get precise. But I decided to change my lips. So I use... Bite Beauty Honeycomb, which is a great neutral. And then I'm going to top it off with a little bit of souffle. And I'm not going to put a gloss over it. I felt like this was a little bit more what I personally was looking for with this look overall. And of course, I'm going to set myself with Urban Decay Chill Makeup Setting Spray. And we are done. I hope you enjoyed this video, you guys. Thanks so much for watching. And I will see you guys very soon. Bye.